Well, the discussions about the decriminalization of sex work have been going on for quite some time now, but no results have been yielded. Instead, we see headlines of sex workers being killed in their numbers while others live in fear. Now, for some, this may be the only manner in which they can provide for their families, but this job, which is seen as illegal in the country, has, however, raised concerns. While some are for it, there are those who strongly disagree. Does this now mean that sex workers do not have rights? or shouldn't be protected at all? Do we now forget about GBV simply because what they are doing is illegal? Well, let's discuss all of this with uh, Katlejo Rasibite from the Sisonke Sex Worker Movement, Sex Worker Rights Specialist Jane Arnott, and the ACDP's Marie Suckers. Welcome uh, to this discussion, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, first up, I mean, just this case in point, highlighting the fact of safety for, for, for sex workers, their trade is illegal in the country. Jane, can I begin uh, with you? Uh, what's your concern from the Sonke gender justice view in terms of sex work? Well, our concern, our main concern is that we need to have some, some kind of law reform and we're calling for the decriminalization of sex work in South Africa. The problem with, with um, criminalization is the fact that sex workers are, are, are not able to work safely. They have no protections or security. And um, we are really concerned that it is a, a human rights issue and it's long time coming that we have some changes to the law and we're calling for full decriminalization of the sex work industry. Yeah, but Marie, from the SEDP, you've been very, very uh, strong on this, even during the last uh, general election campaign. You are not supportive of the decriminalization of sex work. Why? Well, um, the decriminalization of sex work, um, particularly in our country, in the cu current climate, can you imagine with the current um, climate of lawlessness that is in our country, um, should the laws change? what it would mean um, in other countries like European countries where sex work has been um, decriminalized. Uh, it has been proven in the studies that it increases human trafficking, particularly um, from the African continent. And our biggest concern is what it would mean, especially in the current environment in South Africa. I'm sitting in the Western Cape where kidnappings are on the rise. And if you look within this context, decriminalizing sex work um, would contribute um, to human tra trafficking and slavery. Um, and I'm not even touching the point of who does it enable or empower. It does not empower the women. It empowers the pimps and it empowers the madams and the those who make a business out of sex work, not the women. What do you say to the argument that because it is illegal, it's forced to go underground, therefore promotes these crimes that you said, but if it was overboard and allowed, it would become just like any normal economic sector? You can never um, call sex work that degrades women, that objectifies the bodies of women, that it, most women, 98% of the majority of women, that gets involved with sex work does not do so voluntary. They do it because they are forced to, either by circumstance or by, um, by um, poverty, unemployment, um, economic factors that drives them there. So you can never see sex work as, as enabling of women. Um, and our biggest concern, like I said, is within, we need to look at legislation within the context of our country, we also need to look at how would this advance the rights of women. And our biggest contention point is that it does not advance the rights of women. In fact, it adds to criminality and the people that mostly um, would, would be advantaged by it are the very people who are abusing women and using them as tools. So, Katlejo, let me bring you in there from Sisonke uh, Sex Worker Movement. Uh, Decriminalizing uh, uh, sex work, according to, to the ACDP's uh, Marie uh, uh, Suckers, will not empower women, will not advantage women. It's not in their, in their favor. What do you say? 
Uh, thanks <clears throat> for the interview. Um, decriminalization of sex work, it would mean one thing that we all know about, and I'm quite shocked to hear that there's a study that was done somewhere in Europe of which she can even reference to. And um, one thing that I know, if sex work were to be decriminalized, we're talking whereby like women are going to have a full ownership of their body. As we already have seen that mostly um, sex work is being perceived as an industry that is specifically prescribed for women. But as the country, we forget that in the very same industry that we're speaking about today, there are transgender people that are also engaging in. There are men who are also engaging in. So as a society, we should stop having this, um, you know, you know, you know, a, a blanket approach to say by decriminalizing sex work, then human trafficking will be also in the increase. One thing that I know for a fact is the minute sex work is decriminalized in South Africa, it will mean the end of the colonizers' laws, meaning women's gonna have the full right of the constitution of the country. Like, for example, if a man in this country right now is able to have as many wives as they would. But for women to have ownership of their body, then we, we, we throw in the moral cut, which is quite a bit disturbing. Because when you look at the history of black women in the country, we're talking women who are already like, um, I'm, I'm talking religion has already played a role in their life. Culture played a role. By decriminalizing sex work, we're gonna give women the power to have full ownership of what they feel, this is my body, I've got the right to do what I want with my body. You remember when we had an issue around women being uh, attacked for wearing miniskirts? These are some of the things that we need to change the societal mind when it comes to sex workers. Sex workers, they have clearly stated that, you know, they, they enter the, the industry because of certain, you know, pushes that they find themselves in. And I, I, I do not agree that 98% it's a lie. 98% of sex workers, uh, have, the ACTP says they, end, they do not enter the, the, the industry voluntarily. I'm talking about sex work that, you know, not only the one that the media gives you information about, because, you know, our media always portrays sex workers as this poor woman, you know, with lots of makeup and, you know, in a very dirty places. There are sex workers who own mansions, educated sex workers, who are doctors with degrees and masters. So these are some of the things that the media will never show you. So we, we, you blaming us now that we don't paint the, 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 the true picture or the real picture of, of, of sex work? Because of, you do not paint the true picture true pictures of sex work each time when you are even yesterday when you're showing visuals of sex workers in the country you're always showing people in Joburg CBD in the darkest the darkest of areas that you can ever you know demeaning places that's why you would show images of sex workers but you never show sex workers but driving their, their Ferraris living in their house big houses you know educated I sex guess, workers. I guess yeah I guess I guess we have to find them vulnerable. I guess we have to find them, and they have to be willing to be to be known as such while they are driving their Ferraris, as you say. The thing is, already the media has painted sex work with that brush that these are poor okay. women. That's why now even the ACDP it still says these are poor women, of which it's a lie. That's why we need to start sensitizing Jay communities around. What okay, let's bring in. Let's bring in Jane. Let's bring in Jane. Thank you, Katia. We'll come back to you. Let's bring in Jane. You're hearing all of this. What are your thoughts at, at this stage? I mean. Will the decriminalization of sex work, as Marie says, promote things like human trafficking and, and be to a huge disadvantage to women? Or, as, as, as Kakejo says, it will enable women to have ownership of their bodies? Yes, well, I think I support Katalekos' point about having ownership of, of one's body. I think also that the diver diversity that's in the sex work industry. But to speak to the point of trafficking, trafficking is a separate thing completely from, from sex work. So, and it has legislation in this country to deal with trafficking. And trafficking happens not only into the sex work industry, but to other forms of labor. In New Zealand, when they decriminalized um, sex work, there, there have been studies to show because people there were also on about the, you know, the increase in trafficking. And studies have shown there was no increase in trafficking. In fact, decriminalization to open up the industry 
to implement health and safety, to make it a labor sector health and safety issue with regulations. It opens up the industry. In New Zealand, um, sex workers, there was an increase in reporting underage in brothels and concerns around suspected trafficking. So I, I can't, you know, I don't accept yeah. that argument. And also just one crucial point, you know, we, and, uh, we we speak on behalf of, of sex workers. Sex workers are there by choice, even if it is so-called limited. Uh, they it is a choice, and, and, and they have agency. So to, to, you know, to treat all people who enter this industry as, as without agency or choice is, is really, you know, doesn't equate with a human but, rights. But Mari, Mari you disagree with that, Mari? Oh, I emphatically disagree. I, I emphatically disagree. I can, um, firstly, as a pastor that has worked in our communities on the Cape Flats, that has worked with women, that has been involved in prostitution, there is not one woman that I have met, one woman that I have met, that has ever seen sex work as enabling, empowering. And to say that women has a choice over their bodies, I have women in my constituency that are selling their bodies in order to have a room, a, a roof over their head, in order to put food on their table. It's not a choice. It is the push factors that has been referred to earlier of unemployment and poverty that drives women. Have you there. found? Have and you found, Marie? Marie, have you agency? found? Have you found and interacted with a sex worker who drives a Ferrari? Like uh, Katla was saying, some of them, some of them uh, live in mansions and drive Ferraris. I have seen them. I have seen sex workers dying, um, dying of of, of um, HIV AIDS. I have seen sex uh, sex workers who has been um, emotionally um, in in a state of, of of trauma because of what they've been exposed to. I have seen in my community women that has suffered violence, um, unspeakable violence that has changed who they are. Um, so for me to say that women have agency when they go into sex work, it is the biggest lie under the sun. Firstly, let me say that the study that I'm referring to was done by an associate professor that partook in the, um, in the first of its kind research on human trafficking in the Netherlands. And many of the studies that comes out of the Nordic countries are supporting the fact that human trafficking um, increases when sex work is decriminalized. In the Netherlands, the study that I'm speaking of, it is our Nigerian sisters mostly that partook in, uh, that partook in this study and what they told, the stories that they told, how the impact on them as they were trafficked because the demand, no women willingly, the majority, would go into this as a trade. Um, and, and because of that, these, pe these um, um, unscrupulous traders of human beings um, t uh, steal people from their villages and sell them in Europe. Because but don't they, you the think, demand, yeah, don't you uh, think, Marie, yeah, Marie, I don't want this to be a dialogue. We're in a panel discussion, but I need to ask you this, if you can be brief in answering it. Don't you think, I'm just yes. asking this, if it was discriminalized, it would enable a number of other things, like, uh, for example, access to proper health care and therefore you're dealing as you've mentioned Ella with HIV AIDS you could lower the numbers there because people will have to go and test as part of their work because they know that there's a risk there therefore you will promote the usage of safe sex through through condoms and checking and, and getting support and you will reduce dramatically reduce abuse, not just by men, but also by police officers. We are told that even the police officers abuse sex work because it's illegal. I absolutely agree that we need to work at intervention programs that would increase um, access for women. Many of the NGOs that works on the ground currently, especially in our port um, um, cities, they are hugely underfunded. Um, we need to do more to bring funds to those NGOs that are bringing services to pro, um, um, okay. people that are um, within the but, 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 but you so are saying, yes, I, but no, don't change the law, don't decriminalize, but bring in interventions. Yes. What's your view, Katlejo? Um, my view is, <clears throat> for the fact that, uh, you know, Pastor, you need Jesus. 
So remember, even, even in, in the book of books, it was written that he that never sinned must throw the stone. He already throwing stone. And for the fact that globally, we are, we are going into an era which is the revolution of the world, where like by 2030, we need to end HIV, we need to end H uh, STI, we need to end the TB. And by us leaving sex work in the conversation currently now, then meaning South Africa as the head of state with other states that have uh, agreed to end these three diseases by 2030, then South Africa is going to fail. And lastly, secondly, if you remember well, there is no government document in this country that calls sex workers prostitute. So each time when I hear a biblical person as you calling sex workers with those demeaning biblical names, it clearly shows, Pastor, you need to be sensitized. And I can connect with other religious groups that are already preaching the word of the Lord without stigmatizing, without making sure that, you know, they put more stigma to sex workers. And it's easy for us to throw stones at each other. But the, 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 the fact of the matter is, the whole, um, the whole mess, it faces black women. That's why you cannot see our own police arresting other races or other gender. It's always a black woman because they know sex work is a pity crime. No weapon is involved. No gun is involved. Nothing. No, 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 nothing. No fighting. It's just a matter of the police come, give money, give sex, give that, and it happens. So by okay. decriminalizing sex work, we're also going to disempower the police, what the current powers they have over sex workers and with black women's bodies okay jane the the the, 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 the intersectionality there of um, of the of decriminalization and interventions that might assist the women who are practicing sex work uh, where, where in your view is it because what i'm hearing uh, marie is saying is that don't decriminalize it but in put in place uh, interventions my mind says that might not be effective as long as the law says that that activity is illegal no matter what kind of intervention you put in place might not work what do you think jane no, i agree with you fully on that i think you need to have you need to have a change to that law you need to decriminalize um, and then the access to services public health wise as well as safety and security and addressing human rights issues um, gender-based violence um, the police have a crucial role to play in protecting um, sex workers and for sex workers to be able to freely go to a police station to report when they are a victim. Um, at the moment, we, we, because of criminalization, we, we, you know, sex workers are not um, protected by police on the whole and um, are not accessing police when they need to because of fears of arrest, harassment, intimidation, abuse. Yeah. So for me, it, it just makes such common sense to take away the criminal law and let the other laws which apply to all of us in our lives, um, you know, can, can apply to the sex work industry. You know, Marie, I'm also Thank thinking, you. If the law doesn't change, and you said you've been speaking to lots and lots of women who tell you that they've been forced into sex work and they are being abused and they suffer untold violence, as you said, they can't report it now because they'll be arrested. Somebody's been attacked violently during a, 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 an, an exchange of, of sex in this case and, 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 and for monetary gain. They can't go to the police and report that they've been beaten up. But if you decriminalize it, it enables them to be able to go to the police and says, in my normal course of work, which in this case is sex work, I've been attacked. Please help me. Currently, they can't. They're scared. It makes it worse. Um, look, I, I can speak from the reality that I um, live in every single day and that I'm aware of in my constituency and in the work that I do. Policing in our communities uh, specifically has decreased so much. And there is very little evidence, I would say, that the police even has the capacity um, to enforce the law as it stands now. But I would, I would definitely um, agree on the issue of stigma and what it means for women when they report um, crimes against, um, um, uh, regardless of, of whether they a sex worker. Um, I really strongly would say that a human being, regardless of what he does, um, the rights of that person should be protected by the police.
regardless. And if violence against women happens in whatever setting, it should be reported and it should be taken seriously. But we do have an issue of policing um, across the board, whether it, it's not just in terms of sex workers. Um, so I do not think decriminalizing um, sex work would um, increase what we do uh, would uh, improve the circumstances for women that are within this trade um, if you can call it that because i don't i think it is a trade of women it's a trade of our bodies and we have um, i don't want to go into a dialogue but i really think that as a society we need to review the messaging that we are sending to our daughters when we say to them um, you know that they um, sex work is not degrading of them um, and that it is an avenue for them to pursue as a career. Um, certainly, I disagree with that, but I do agree that socially we so, need the interventions um, to ensure that the rights of, of women are, are protected in terms of, of, of their safety and okay. security. As we conclude, Jane and Kasejo and Anne Marie, I'm going to give you each a very kind of parting remark. So we have a situation six bodies of women have been found in Johannesburg. They are supposedly sex workers, and apparently six more are still missing. And, and, and they, 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 they're telling us in the media that they don't uh, uh, go and report uh, abuse and attacks and violence because uh, their, their work is, is regarded as illegal according to the laws of, of, of this country. So that sort of somehow disempowers them. So what's the best way forward? Marie, you've mentioned social interventions as one of those aspects. Maybe you could think of others. Let me start with you, Katlejo. What is the best way forward to ensure the safety of women? Because currently sex work is not decriminalized in this country. Um, we, look, we need to look into the Law Reform Commission to basically beg them to say, it's been almost 10 years we're asking for the report. And we are aware that uh, you are taking your own time, but that's why women are still dying out there. And uh, one thing that I just want to, in conclusion, to say, uh, Pastor, I've never met any woman or a, a human being that sells their body because meaningfully, if you want to sell your body, like the arm needs to have a, a certain cost, the toe must have a cost, the head must have a cost. You know, clearly your language in, in terms of how you approach sex work, I'm referring to women that are offering sexual services to adults that are consenting. I thank you. Okay, Jane? Yeah, um, just to say that there is a, um, you know, the Department of Constitutional uh, development and the deputy minister john jeffries they are busy with the decrim bill at the moment and we are trusting and hoping that they fast track it and uh, trusting that it will have full decriminalizations um in this bill and i think that uh, that is that is promising for this country um and i'm trusting that we can move forward with that because I think it's um, decrim is, is decriminalization will form a platform for for many other um, interventions to happen within the sex work industry that are led by sex workers, and that can you know um, improve the protections and access to services that sex workers in this country deserve. Thank you, Marie. Uh, final way to you. You've mentioned social intervention as one way. What other thoughts have you got? Remove the barriers. Remove the barriers that um, are still there for women to further their education, especially if they have, um, you know, had an interruption uh, through uh, pregnancy or rearing their children. Remove the barriers and give our, our, our young women the opportunity to access education, access opportunity to develop skills. Those are the things that are going to advance our, 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 our goal children and our women. Thank you very much. Uh, Marie Suckers from SEDP and Jane uh, Anno, a sex worker rights specialist, as well as Katlejo Rasibitse from Sisonke Sex Worker Movement. Thank you very much for your time this afternoon.